When you are preparing to take your first steps into the Star Citizen universe, the choice of Starship can often be a very daunting choice. Today I'm going to try and give you the information you need to help you make the right one. So, for whatever reason, you have decided it's time to pick up Star Citizen. Whether you be a long-time follower who's finally taken the plunge, or you are someone who has just recently discovered Star Citizen, you're now in the position of trying to decide oh, between your starter ships. And there are several game packs with several different types of ships that all come with the game. But there are two that are sort of thrown at you, it's sort of talked about as the two main starter packs, they're sort of branded as the two main starter packs. And that is the Aurora MR and the Mustang Alpha. We will be talking about a third ship, but we're going to leave that till a bit later. The reason these two ships are seen as the starter ships is mainly because they're the cheapest ships, they're the sort of entry level ships. Um, Obviously, when you're really new to the project, you're going to be wanting to try and not spend too much on the game. Um, you want to just get your first taste kind of thing. And you could always then upgrade later. Um, the developer, that's one thing the developer is really good. At any point, you can just say, eh, I'm not keen on this package. And you get like a full store credit of everything you paid. And you can just buy another one. Or you can just choose a ship and just upgrade a ship whilst keeping the old package. There is a lot of stuff in there. These two... Starter packs are seen as the dip in your toe into the water starter packs. There is a lot of similarities between the two ships, but there is a lot of flavour and differences between them as well. And even though you could get by with either ship for dipping your toes into the game, that is the whole purpose of this starter, these two starter ships. They are sort of slightly tailored more towards different people. That is one thing I want to just quickly mention here as well. Factory is a wee bit bigger deal than you would imagine. You'd like, oh, why is Factory a big deal? You're just going to load up the game and start upgrading them. Why is it a big deal, Factory? You've got to remember that there is going to be a lot of wipes between now and release of the game. So... Every time the game's wiped, you're going to lose all those upgrades to your ship. And you're going to go right back to just having the stock factory level gear. And even though this is a really good time for people that are just getting into the game to jump into the game, because ship renting is going to be a thing literally just around the corner as I'm talking to the US right now. In the next week or so, 3.7 will be hitting access to the public basically at the moment it's in wave one at my time of recording so only i think it's subscribers only have access to it at the moment so you are going to be able to rent ships try other ships in game with in-game currency there was already the option to purchase ships with in-game currency but it was a wee bit grindy renting ships is far more economic and especially when you consider there's going to be wipes so it's a great time to jump into the game because you're going to be able to try out so many more ships and so you're not going to be wanting to spend a lot of money. My point here, I'm getting to my point here, by the way. I'm not just rambling on. Um, my point is you're not going to be wanting to spend a lot of money on upgrading these ships because you're want, going to be wanting to save up a wee bit of money then rent a bigger, better ship that can do a lot more. And maybe you can have a friend in it too. You've met this other guy and you just want to go and do a mission together because uh, sharing missions is going to be a new feature in 3.7 as well so there's going to be a lot of other things you're wanting to do and a lot of other things you want to spend your money on but before we talk about their differences perhaps we should get the stuff out of the way that they are very very similar about I'm trying to think of a good word there but I can't really think of one the, the areas where they're very very similar anyway they are both very very small tiddly little fighters as you would expect they oh, what you expect for your entry level ship. You're not gonna like have your big huge carrier that requires like five players at least to properly man to be a starter ship. You're just taking your first little foray into the world. 
so that is kind of what to expect. They obviously are both very small which does help when you're landing like a small ship it is a much easier to land due to the simple fact that it's small landing pad obviously much bigger than the small ship you don't have to be hugely accurate so yeah that is a, well, a pro for both of them and a con at the same time the skies and scale because a lot of people like me just big ships are just so cool you want a big ship you want to pilot a big ship you don't want to well, you maybe don't want to pilot a big ship you want to be in a big ship you've got lots of room to explore that kind of thing so they are both very small ship one man ships in fact the well we'll talk about that later we're talking about the stuff that is similar they both have um, very small engines their quantum drives are really small if you're going to be wanting to jump between the planets in the solar system be expected a hefty like travel time of like 15 minutes in the quantum like warp travel or whatever like Star Wars when the light the stars will turn into lights and pass you like that you expect to have a long travel time in these ships if you want to jump between the planets they're not really designed for that sort of thing they're designed to have like a carrier style ship to land on that then travels between the planets or even solar systems once a second system is added to the game. They are more designed for interplanetary system travel. So if you've got a planet and then it's got several moons, you quantum drive to the moons, that's the kind of travel that the quantum drive is designed for in both of these ships. They also have very very small as you would imagine cargo capacity so even though in both of the descriptions on the site it does talk about the cargo capacity being like a good thing for these ships it is really not it's not going to be much in the way at all plus comparing that to the fact that their quantum drive is only really good planetary system wide not even solar system wide they would really really struggle if you were just wanting to come in and just trade free as that's the way the gameplay you're wanting neither of these ships are really designed for that but if you are wanting to be a free trader that kind of thing i still recommend picking up one of these starships first because as i said it's all about dipping your toe into the waters of the game learning the basics flying around making mistakes that kind of thing these are the kind of ships you want to be doing that sort of thing in not doesn't matter so much these days when there's not going to be much costs there's your insurance is never really going to run out and that kind of thing but once the game is fully fully released you don't want to be taking a huge capital ship out and just going for a joyride and that kind of thing that is going to come with very hefty bills when these little ships are kind of more going to be like your little joyride learning to play the game kind of starter ships they both have the same number of weapon slots and they both come with the same number of weapons factory as default. We will describe the weapons on each of them a wee bit more when we're describing the differences in them. But standard, they both come with two forward mounted weapons with the option to upgrade for two like wing mounted weapons as well, all of the small size. So when it comes to firepower, they are very, very similar. In fact, you know what? We're talking about firepower. We'll talk about the differences in their firepower whilst we're here. The site describes um, the Aurora MR as having two lasers as well as the Mustang having its two lasers. But this is not 100% accurate. The information is a wee bit outdated here. The Aurora MR has two small Gatling guns, and I, when I say small, for Star Universe's ship size weaponry, they are very small. They're like little pea shooter Gatling guns. They've got a really good high rate of fire, but the damage is overall is not too great on them. They are quite small. Whereas the Mustang has its two star weapons in a sort of turret underneath its nose, which does give it a slightly better field of fire, but they are a lot slower to fire, but pack a tiny bit more of a punch. The DPS on them feels round about the same overall, but obviously you're going to need to have slightly better accuracy on the Mustang. If you miss a few shots in the Aurora, it's not going to be a big deal, whereas the Mustang, you miss a few shots, that's quite a lot of DPS that's sort of gone. But then you could also argue that if you only have a very short window 
to get the damage on there, like you're in the middle of a big dogfight, the Mustang, you only need to get that one little shot off and you've got an okay tiny bit of damage there. Whereas for the Aurora, you only get those couple of shots off and you do basically nothing. But neither ship really has that good weaponry to start off with. It's not that powerful. There's even jokes going around where people are like, if it's player versus player, they're like, how the hell did an Aurora manage to take you out? That kind of thing. But if you do upgrade them, they can pack a l quite a bit of punch for their size. You're obviously not going to be taking on anything like a capital ship, but if you upgrade to all the weapon slots and then like get missiles on them, they do pack a hefty wee punch for their size and fight in other similar size ships. But it's just when you get them stock at factory, they're not going to pack a lot of punch at all. In small ships that are going to be dogfighting that kind of thing, your speed can often be a very big thing and can often be the difference between you winning a dogfight and losing a dogfight. So when it comes to speed, which one really has the edge? And they're, according to the site, I'm just going to the site stats here, which I'm a wee bit uh, over the actual numbers, but I know the least... The facts that the numbers show at least will be true, if you get what I'm trying to say here. So they may have been tweaked and the numbers won't be exact, probably, but the actual which one's better what will still be the same. According to the site anyway, the Mustang Alpha has a speed of 255 meters a second, which is a hell of a lot faster than the 195 of the Aurora. So as I said, even though those numbers may not be exact now for you to balance tweaking, you can clearly see that the Mustang has the edge and is intended to have the edge here. But if you take a look at your afterburner speed, it actually shows a different story. The Aurora actually has a 1,210 afterburner speed, which is when you hit your like boost. If you imagine a racing game like with your nitro or your whatever, but it's like your boosted speed that will overheat your engine really fast. So you're not going to be wanting to use it a lot, but you're going to want to use it when you want that little sudden burst of extra speed. Its afterburner speed is 1,210 max afterburner speed, whereas the Mustangs is 1,160. So that is a rather small difference, and so I definitely give the overall speed advantage la ve, 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 tongue tied very much so to the Mustang. And yeah, the Mustang does seem to have the slight edge when it comes to dogfighting, for the simple fact, as I said earlier, it only needs that narrow window for the weapons to deal that wee bit damage, and well, that's just the start of weapons. You could then argue again, but then the speed and maneuverability of the Mustang is slightly better. If you see here, uh, we've got the pitch, yaw and roll sort of stats for the two of them, which is your sort of maneuverability when you're just using your like thrusters around the place for the Aurora in order of uh, pitch, yaw and roll is 70, 70, then 95. Whereas on the Mustang, it's 1990, 135. So that's giving you a much more power from your thrusters, giving you that sort of wee bit edge and maneuvering as well. And then when you come to acceleration, the Mustang takes it again. It is a much more agile little fighter with uh, the Aurora's X, Y, and Z axis being 42.9, 45.6, and then 44.1. Whereas the Mustangs are 73.8, 84.1, and 72.2. So, again, those numbers may not be exact in the current build, but it gives you a clear sort of feel and taste for which one's going to be better at what. And that is a clear big advantage to the Mustang. But one thing that is quite important, especially in the game like Star Citizen, is immersion. And immersion can come from many things. Now, if you want, the Mustang and the Aurora have quite different feels and looks. The Aurora has a very nice, clean sort of design. It's sort of sleek, very sort of modern age, space sort of look and feel to it. You can see in its cockpit with its dual handles and its power, its sort of information displays across your field of vision. 
and it's sort of nice, sleek, sort of cockpit and very sort of angular sort of design. Whereas the Mustang has a much more sort of grittier sort of 80s, 90s sort of approach of what space travel would look like. It's all its information is on the one console right in front of you, but there is no sort of struts or anything like that. You've got a much nicer sort of high field of view, so you may not have as much field of view in your immediate lower sort of area, but you have a much better sort of higher field of view. Then you've got the actual look and model of the ship itself. The Aurora looks like it's longer, but according to the stats, it's actually shorter. But I think that's more of it's just sort of sleek design and elongated sort of look. Whereas the Mustang is definitely the taller of the two and it definitely gets cool points for the fact that when you deploy the landing gear, the wings also raise, giving it a very nice cool factor there. And you can see at a glance that the Mustang has a much more of a fighter sort of style and look to the ship. Whereas the Aurora is meant to be more of a sort of all-rounder, slightly more modular kind of look and feel. Now there is a slight difference to the storage space default on these ships. The utility item on the Mustang Alpha is its storage box, its many little cargo box. And that is what gives it his its four units of storage, which does beat the Aurora's <laughs> You're going to be hearing this a lot at this point, you'll be like, why the F would you ever go for the Aurora? The Mustang sounds like it's better than everything. But it's not completely the case. So it does have this mini storage unit, which gives it the four storage units for if you are doing dabbling in a wee bit of trading. But I wouldn't really recommend it in these ships. The Aurora does start off with three storage units, which isn't as good as the four. But instead, it also has a utility item slot, which you could use to add a small cargo container, or you could use to add many items that basically could tweak the ship in any way, shape, or form, which is why this ship is seen as the better sort of all-rounder ship. You'd have this utility slot, which you can put almost anything in. Like, if you add the cargo slot, you will make your ship slightly slower, but you will then have a wee bit of storage, so if you really want to do free and you're going to have to use one of these starter ships, at least at first, the Aurora would the way to go and you could get the utility item to upgrade your space. Or you could get some sort of energy booster that gives more power to the shields, but remember there will always be a drawback. You're always going to have something that makes you lose out. So if you do get the capa say a capacitor type thing that upgrades your power to your shields, it will drain your guns and that a wee bit more. As well as you have in this sort of better all-round view in the Mustang, the window, which is nice and smooth, is also a wee bit dirty, which its situations isn't always the best. If you're sort of at an angle where the sunlight is hitting the glass at a right angle it can make it very hard to see out of but it does add a lot of immersion if you're planning to be like this dirty little fighter dirty little fighter is probably the wrong way to word it because you're not fighting dirty but if the ship itself is dirty you've got like an old junker it's a hand-me-down or something the mustang definitely has a wee bit of a feel there that the robert space industries aurora doesn't but now we're going to get into an uh, area of immersion so to speak that the Aurora really, really kicks the Mustang's butt. It's just having space. Space. That is a really big thing in this game. The Aurora, you can do delivery missions in the Aurora that you can't do in the Mustang for the simple fact that you have an actual space you can stand up inside your ship. These delivery missions where you get to be spry, eh, spry, fry the international, interplay. I'll start that again. Fry, the interplanetary delivery boy from Future Hour. Yes, you get to beat him. You can go to this place, pick up a box, take it somewhere else, put it in, deliver it like a pizza. And because you've got nowhere to stand up inside your Mustang, you've got nowhere you can sort of place that box. That's With a Mustang, you climb into the cockpit, that's it. There is nowhere to move around. Whereas for the 
Aurora, you've got these cool, nice, sleek doors you can open up. We we'll ladder climb inside. <gasps> is that a bed as well in the back for you to sleep in? That is... For immersion reasons, that is a huge thing. And the bed actually has a really good practical aspect of it as well. In Star Citizen, whenever you log out, you will be ported back to a port. The last major port you have landed at, you will wake up in an easy hab, which is basically like a space era travel lodge that you just wake up in, you can then go summon your ship and take off and have your adventures again. But if you have a bed like the Aurora does, and you're out in space and you're like, mm -hmm, I feel like logging out now. You can just power down your ship, or leave it powered on for whatever reason, if you want to, for some weird reason. You get up, you walk over, you open your little hatch, you climb into your bed, and then you log out. And when you decide to log back in, you just wake up in your bed, and you can get up and just go back to your ship and continue doing what you were doing. At the time I'm recording this, if you had a mission before when you logged out and you've now logged back in, that mission will probably be gone. But you can still just continue from wherever you left off. If you were um, about to take do a mission down on the surface to go kill some guys in the first person shooter mode, you can undertake that, you can still go do it, you can go find one that's really similar, you're in the same place, all those missions spawn on the one planet at the moment, you take that mission, down you go, and hey presto, that's it. So the bed is really, really useful. So with that all said and done now, you've probably started to think, hmm, I definitely like the look or the feel of this ship more, or I'm going for the Mustang because it's definitely better in fighting, or I'm definitely going for the Aurora because it's just sleeker and cooler. You get that bed! Oh boy, the bed! Um, I'm about to throw a spanner into the works, and that is that uh, currently at the time of recording this, I said that a lot this video, if you buy the Mustang starter pack, you have access to both ships. So with that said, as of this right second, as long as this is still a thing, I recommend buying the Mustang. Because you can try it both, you can play both. You can see if there is one you fall in love with more with actually dipping your toes into the water with both. And the great thing is, even if you are thinking you're going to prefer the Aurora, you can still then go, yeah, I'm definitely preferring the Aurora. They talked about this on that stream the other day. I'm going to go and... Well, I've got the Mustang. I've got a problem. Not a problem at all. As I said earlier in the video, you can go onto the website and just go onto the right part of the page. Say, I don't want this anymore. Click it and you will get a full, a full refund and store credit, which you can then go and purchase another pack and the two packs are the same price. But I'm gonna throw another spanner in the works. Ish. There is a ship that people say is the true starter, is the true go-to ship for doing the basics, dipping your toe into the game, learning the game, that sort of thing. And the reason it's not advertised as a star, I think, is because it's slightly more expensive for dipping your toe into the water. It might not be ideal. But see, I'm going to talk about what I recommend to do slightly after this. And that is the Avenger Titan. The Avenger Titan is really a much better ship than both the ships. It is more powerful, it has better weapons, it has better speed, it has better quantum drive. It has a lot more space than the Aurora. It's got a bed like the Aurora. It even has a giant ramp on the back and enough space in the back that you can fit a small vehicle. Either one of the bikes or one of the... I think it's got to be the smallest like Rover four-wheeler vehicle. I don't think it can fit the large one in it. 
that is a huge step up, especially for exploration, for the simple fact that if you're walking around the planet right now, you're not getting anywhere fast. Like, I've seen lots of information on the scale and size of these moons, and if you've ever played World of Warcraft, one of the small moons in this game has more area than World of Warcraft has in all of its zones and all of its expansions put together on just one little tiny moon in this game. So could you imagine walking around with realistic sort of mechanics so you're not running super duper like godspeed fast like you can in a lot of games and if you are doing a lot of running your heart rate is going to go up and you're eventually going to pass out. So having a vehicle that you can land and then take off and explore the actual moons and all that is huge and especially if you combine that with what we talked about earlier and how rentals are going to be in-game and you can purchase ships in-game with in-game currency now so a lot of these vehicles aren't going to be hugely expensive um, some of the bikes are i've seen some of the bikes god they're expensive for what they are at the moment but renting one shouldn't be too much of a ordeal so if you want to go and explore a moon you know you can rent a ship you can fit you can rent a bike fit it in your ship and then away you go you can't do that with the other ships there's just so much more the ship can do but how would you get it well basically if you're wanting to get the avenger titan so you're gonna have to sink a wee bit more money into the game i would definitely recommend getting the mustang alpha pack because when you trade in a ship, the Mustang Alpha, for some reason, is worth $5 more. And, because it's worth $30. And if you then go to the Upgrade Your Ship page, you can then upgrade your Mustang to the Avenger Titan. And it's going to be $5 cheaper. Whereas if you chose the Aurora, it's going to be $5 dearer. I don't know any word way to describe it. There's Mustangs worth $30, the Aurora is worth $25, and the Avenger Titan is $50. And last time I looked at it, for the upgrade from the Mustang to the Aurora, for me, was about £19. So you can do the translation if you want. That's how much it was for me. It was slightly worse. And so... That is probably what I'm going to say, that's my recommendation. As of this point in time, I would recommend everyone picks up the Mustang, because at this point in time, the Mustang can do, well, I guess both. You get both ships, so why would you ever take the Aurora? But if that is no longer the case, then I would personally go for the Aurora. But it really depends on everyone's personal preference. It is, that's what I'm saying, it's a personal choice. And even though I'm saying I'm going with the Aurora, I have, and that's what I did do. I originally did go for the Aurora because I wasn't aware that with the Mustang, you got both. I have since traded in my Aurora package to get the Mustang package because, as I said, at this point in time, you get both. And I am planning at some point in time, once I've played around with both ships a wee bit more, to say goodbye to them and upgrade to the Avenger Titan. So, I went over and I've talked about both ships quite a bit. I hope you're now a bit more informed, you feel ready to make that choice. And if so, I've done my job. I hope you've all enjoyed this. I shall see you all next time. Bye, say bye.